While Grace was sitting alone, waiting and relaxing, by trying to get attention to Michael, she waved and waved, but Michael didn't notice her at the pizza pub. Johnny Knox looked over and noticed her waving and nudged Michael. And Michael noticed that it was Grace. Grace, said Michael, what are you doing here? And Grace obviously was excited that Michael noticed. She said in unison, how, they both said in unison, how are you? And they chuckled. Grace said, you first. Michael said, I'm here to pick up an order. What are you doing? Grace ex explained that she had just moved into her house and a great, she had just had dinner with a great friend. Michael said, you're making friends pretty fast here. Grace said, you're so right. I love it here. Michael said, would you take me up on a lunch next week? I'm pretty busy on the weekends as I work a lot of extra hours on the weekends. Grace said, absolutely. When? How about we meet here Tuesday at 12.30, the same place here at the Pizza Pub, and we can go from here. We can go anywhere you like, Michael said. Grace said, that is an excellent idea. He said, listen, I need to get back to work. I have some hungry employees. Grace was always impressed by his caring and thoughtfulness. Tonight was no different. As they were leaving and walking out the door, she said, good night, Michael. And, she, and Michael said to her, good night, Grace. There is truly no place like home for Grace, especially after a long journey that Grace had been on to sleep in her own bed for the first time with new blankets. She embraced this new life and new home, like just adjusting so well to it. Things were going so well considering all that she had endured. She had accomplished a lot to get into her new home that day. And to this journey had reached its pinnacle and the stars were sparkling that night. That's when Grace pulled up the new telescope and watched the full moon that night. She began to dream again. She no longer had been sleep deprived for by abuse. She could get easily lost in her dreams, fearing, no longer fearing for her safety or her life, and returning to a better place in her mind and spirit. As Grace watched the stars through the telescope, she stargazed late into the evening. The weather was perfect, 60 degrees. She began to realize how wonderful her surroundings were. Her home was full of love. It was well decorated by the help of Marissa and the agency. And before she could even think about it, she was ready to close up the telescope. She wanted to take one last look at the full moon and put the telescope away. She wanted to rush away into her bed, into the cottage, and feel the quiet romance of the stars and take it all in. And as she felt so good about this new life, she couldn't feel anything better than what she was feeling, leaving John behind. She realized she was going to have to face the filing for divorce in the morning. And with the help of Marissa and the agency, it was a reality that she had to face in the morning. And what was ahead was no longer going to be a tough battle alone. But she had the help of the agency and Judge Quinn. So the next day, as this aroma of a fresh cup of espresso filled the air, a gift by the agency, a double espresso latte was the first thing that she brewed in her new espresso machine gifted by the agency. Grace had made herself a double shot latte. Grace thought to herself, this is such a wonderful thing that they have done for her. Wow, to have a double espresso. It's not normal for her to have so many wonderful things happen all at once. It was time.
time to get her day started as her morning was already well eaten gear, especially as it was Friday and it's always tough to get a day like this started with the work that she had ahead of her because most people are wrapping up their week, but it was just the beginning of her journey. The agency was waiting for, to hear back from Grace, though. Grace said Marissa, as she was calling her from her cell phone, how did your first night at the cottage go? Grace excitedly explained it was more than perfect. After you left, I ran into that man, Michael, who pumped gas in my car that, at the gas station. Then I strolled home and went stargazing, and then the telescope and everything that was given to me, I just tried to take it all in and just escape into the beautiful new blanket, and everything was just perfect. Marissa said, wow, Gracie, you make it sound so wonderful. Grace said, I want to thank you, Michelle, and I, I want to thank Michelle for the espresso machine. Who would ever think that you would give me with such a beautiful thing? It certainly makes coffee taste better, too. Marissa said, oh, you better know something about the agency here. We're espresso addicts. We had to get you one, too. If you're going to hang out with us, you're going to drink a lot of espresso. <laughs> Grace excitedly said, really? I didn't know. Grace changing the subject for a moment. While I'm preparing to file for divorce, Marissa, I'm ready to file for divorce. Marissa said, okay, let's go. Whatever details, we can head over to the courthouse this afternoon and file it today. Grace excitedly said, today, really? Marissa said, yes, this is not hard at all. There are special cases involving domestic abuse and your case can settle within 30 days. She dropped the phone and cried. Grace couldn't believe it. Marissa said, it's okay to cry. You've been through so much. Marissa said, I'm on my way, if that's okay. Grace picked up the phone and said, yes, Marissa, it's okay, come over. Let's get started. I want this marriage to end. I want my life to begin over again. Marissa said, you got it. I'll be there in 10 minutes. Hello? It's Marissa. Oh, come on in. Hi, good morning. Oh, it's so good to see you. Well, you ready to start your life over again, Grace? Yes. Marissa said, let's go over this, the judge's order and the police documents. Are you ready? Let's get some du double espresso on there. <laughs> you got it, says Grace. All right, the judge's order says this, and the police documents and everything that we have to go through is a bunch of paperwork so let's get the table clear and sit down there's a lot of different things that we need to go through in order to settle your divorce case and first let's go over what we have right in front of us the judge's order the police documents so we can settle this before John is released from jail Grace said absolutely as the ladies went over the documents, it was also re a real reality that it wasn't going to take long. Marissa said to Grace, you have an open shut case under the law. Judge Quinn is still presiding over your case, too. We also have documentation from the hospital, from the injuries to the EMTs, and Carrie as a witness. So her statement is going to be very helpful in your case. As far as I'm concerned, your divorce will settle quickly. Grace smiled. These are the type of divorce cases that save lives. They are special recommendations because of domestic abuse in these cases as well. So what does that mean? Does my divorce settle within 30 days? Most likely, 
In typical divorce cases, it's usually separation of property and separation of finances, but yours is purely on domestic abuse, and there's laws because of domestic abuse that you can leave your marriage and your property is already in storage. Isn't that correct? Yeah, so you just have to save receipts. And because you have relocation funds ordered by the judge, you're a victim of crime. So under the crime laws, they give you a certain amount of money to reimburse you. And that's what you're going to be ordered to do is fill out paperwork from the crime center. So there's some simple things we have to go through with the receipts. And that is going to be something we can work on separately. But as far as your divorce goes, it will be a process of just getting this paperwork all together, which I have here in this file. Now we're going to go ahead over to the courthouse with the documentation we have in front of us and go ahead and file. Are you ready to do that? She said, well, we didn't have to wait till this afternoon then, is what you're saying. She goes, no. Well, let's drink our espresso and head over to the courthouse. What do you think? I think that's a great idea. I think drinking some espresso is just what we need, and then we can head over to the courthouse and file for the divorce and get this ball rolling. That is a fantastic idea. Let's drink to that. It's espresso on the fly. Oh, that is such great coffee. You make the best espresso. I think Michelle would be impressed. I'm going to tell Michelle that you make the best espresso so we can have you over to the office more often. Once this is all finished, we're going to have an espresso party, <laughs> said Gracie. And then I'll be the one to gift you with a, a good special blend of my favorite coffee. And that way I can show my gratitude to all of you, how special all of you have been to me. Well, let's finish up our coffee, and we can talk about that in another time. We're going to go file for that divorce and get this ball rolling. How about that, Gracie? Sounds like a great idea. Let's go. Upon arriving in the courthouse, we entered into the security. We were met with the clerk courts and handed our documents. She rubber stamped and copied all our documents. Marissa said to Grace, this should only take a few minutes. Sure enough, Marissa was right. The divorce paperwork was filled out, filed by the courts, and the clerk rubber stamped, and the last documents were signed. After signing the last document, Grace was told by the clerk that she would hear from the clerk of courts soon by mail. Marissa and Grace thanked the clerk at courts and thanked and then left. Marissa suggested that we meet with the team and Michelle at the agency. Grace agreed. The 10-minute ride to the agency was not much. After all, they accomplished everything they had planned out to do. At the agency, Michelle was drinking her last cup of espresso. Grace grinned. Thank you so much, Michelle. We filed the divorce paperwork at the courthouse as planned, said Marissa to Michelle. Michelle said, let's go into my office. This deserves an important meeting, just the three of us. Michelle is a director of the agency and has heard a lot of the hard luck cases. Grace's case was important to Michelle. Michelle said to Grace, so how do you feel that the paperwork was filed at the courthouse since it's been filed? Grace said, relieved. There are no words other than what I've already said, said Grace. I want to thank you because I couldn't do this without the help and support you have shown me. Marissa has been there by my side, and the agency has been there to guide me in the legal matters, too. Michelle said, not to mention a double espresso helps jokingly. Grace giggled. You're so right. What a day. What a 
day at the courthouse and at the meeting. That meeting with Michelle was great. I think I'm going to have some espresso. <laughs> oh, wow. I can't believe I'm drinking espresso again. I can't help myself. What a day. Let me just take this in. A day, the second day in my house. I can't believe they gave me a new toaster, too. A new spice rack, a computer. Let me just count how much they've done for me. I can't even think. New curtains, a new lamp, a new kitchen table, an antique, antique furniture. I have a pitcher for water, plants. They did this so nice. Marissa's a decorator, too. Not only is she good at making espresso, but wow. Let me turn on this coffee pot espresso machine. Oh, uh, wow. I'm just going to sit and reflect on this day because going to the courthouse and filing that divorce really has me reflecting. And I can't forget Tuesday, I have a big important lunch date. I'm going to be divorced and I might even have myself a date and the prospects are endless here. Springfield has really proven to be something great. The conversation was good today. I really have a lot to think about, like the new blanket that I have on my bed, a new brand new bed, a new couch. Everything about this new home is just amazing. The welcome sign, the handmade materials that were made by hand by the donors, the donations, the thrifted items. Oh, wow. I am just astounded by what I have. You know what I really need? I really just need companionship. And as I sit back and reflect, I can look in the mirror and my wounds are healed. I look in the mirror and it's not like I'm looking invisible. I used to think about when I would look in the mirror and those black and blue marks, I didn't recognize that person who was in the mirror and I used to call myself the invisible woman. And I didn't recognize myself anymore. I'm healing. I'm healing. I'm healing. And that's the amazing part about this experience is that I'm going to be free once and for all, free at last from this journey is showing me that I am going to experience a totally new life. I have the best people in the world helping me, and I don't know what I can say. I got to know how to put it in the words. They got me a new toaster, a spice rack. I, I look around me, and I none of this is mine. This was all given to me. My home has been literally given to me by the judge. You know, all I have to do is do the paperwork for the Victim Crime Center, and I, I get reimbursed for everything that I've spent to get through this. And I will have a job, and I'll go back to school. I can do things. I can live again. I got a good night's rest after looking through the telescope last night. I have hopes and dreams again. I'm not sleep deprived like I was when I would live with John, and I can go back to my maiden name. I can live. I can do things. I can experience life again, free of domestic abuse. It's a miracle. It's truly a miracle.